Hello and welcome back. My name is Elise if you're new here. Today I'm going to show you a video about heat embossing over Copic colored images. This is featuring new stamps and dies from the Waffle Flower release out um, today if you're watching this when it launches July the 5th. It's a Christmas in July release and there's a lot of fun things but I was really drawn to these points of flowers. So I started out kind of by knowing how I wanted to lay this out. So I've got some of those floral images, the oval, the largest oval from the classic frames die, and a piece of um, Nina 110 pound. Just gonna go ahead and stamp those flower images. I'm gonna use some Hero Arts Intense Black Ink so that I don't get any smudging when I do my Copic coloring. Now the key here is once I have done the stamping, I am gonna leave these floral images in my misty door exactly where they are because I'm going to come back and stamp them again to do my heat embossing. I'm going to go ahead and stamp these down twice so that I get a really good impression and then we're going to move on to making the background. So to make the background of this card I've got some um, Canson XL watercolor paper taped with some post-it note tape down to a hardboard. And I've got some of these um, really fun gem watercolors. And I'm just using a variation of some gold tones. I want to get a little bit of a gradient look. Um, these watercolors are extraordinarily shimmery, so they're very fun. And using this wide paintbrush, it's a three quarter inch paintbrush. Um, it is from, um, it is a Zen paintbrush. That's what the line is called, Zen. I think it's from Royal and something. I'll have it linked down below along with all the other supplies that I'm using. I'm just kind of making a gradient and I kind of want this to look a little bit streaky. That way it kind of honestly almost looks like wood tone. And I'm doing the darkest color at the top going down to a lighter gold at the bottom. This watercolor set is so much fun just because it's so many different variations. This is honestly all of the golds and kind of champagne and like pearl colors you would probably ever need. And this set goes on sale a lot on Amazon. So really, really good deal on this watercolor set. And I think this makes such a pretty background. So I am just going back and forth, back and forth with this. I played with this for probably about 10 minutes, got it to a place where I was happy with it and then set it aside to completely air dry. Like I said at the start of this video, this is a part of a Christmas in July theme release. I think that's so much fun. It gives you a lot of time if you want to make all of your holiday and Christmas cards. It gives you a lot of time to get them going because as we all know, it takes us a while to make cards. So if you wanna send out handmade holiday cards, you really need to start early. And this release has a lot of really fun things for you to be able to start on your holiday cards. This is just one of the many sets. There are so many great ones, all different card making styles, um, whatever kind of style you gravitate towards, you're gonna find something in this set, in this release. Going ahead and finishing up my panel and then I am going to set this aside to completely air dry. I thought the water was really, really cool here. So I wanted to show it. It honestly looks like some sort of lava lamp. I just really enjoyed it. Here are is a look at the Copic markers I'm going to be using today. This is probably my favorite holiday red and green combination. I've got um, the Copic coloring in here sped up because I'm doing um, pretty much the same thing for all three flowers. I'm just showing um, this larger cluster and then I will skip the other portions. I love this red combo for Christmas. It's R59, 39, and 29. It's also not usually a combo that I go for. I usually tend to stick to the exact same color family, but because these all end in nine, they work really well together. I actually think I got this combo from Christy Gets Crafty here on YouTube. 
just going ahead, I color my Copic images darkest to lightest. So laying down my darkest color, and then I will move to my lightest shade. For those of you that are in Canada and the States, I hope that you enjoyed your Canada Day and uh, 4th of July holidays. Um, for those of you that don't know, I live in the States, but I'm originally from Canada. So I kind of get to celebrate both, which is a lot of fun. It's really funny when it's, you know, so hot outside, but making holiday cards, but you know what? You got to get started. You got to get moving on, getting all your Christmas cards done. Just going in and adding that light tone, which I think adds so much dimension to these flower images. And then, like I said, I'm going to skip the coloring for the other, uh, for the red on the other flowers. I just go in with um, one color of yellow for the centers. This is really nothing fancy. I'm just laying down some yellow coloring. If they're so small, it doesn't make sense to do shading on those. Using my favorite green combo, it is G46, 43, and 40. I actually bought this pack of colors on a tribal end color pack from Amazon. They often have pretty good deals on these color packs. Um, so maybe check there if you are starting to build your Copa collection or are looking for some more colors. I really like these because they're a little bit more muted, but I find them to be a very neutral tone green. They're not overly blue or overly yellow. And I know that there are different kinds of leaves in these floral clusters, but I'm just coloring them as if they're all the same leaf, honestly, just to make it a lot easier for me. Moving on from there, I'm going to quick stamp my sentiment. I'm using a separate Misty for this because again, I don't want to move um, the images that are in my Misty. Stamping down with Versamark and using some Gina K fine detail gold embossing powder. Getting that season's greeting uh, co coated and then I'm going to heat emboss it. And then in a second you'll see me run it through my die cut machine. Now back to my original mini misty here. I'm going to go ahead and use some Versamark stamp down and it's just going to go right over those stamp lines. You won't see the black lines anymore. When you look at the final project, all you see are the pretty gold uh, heat emboss lines. Um, if you Copic color on to heat emboss um, lines, it does potentially harm your nibs and you'll have to replace them a little bit more often. So I find that if you have a misty or a stamp positioner, this is the way to do it. Plus for me, I'm not good at something like no line coloring. I want black lines so that I can really, really see what I'm doing. I'm gonna go ahead and get that heat set. And then we can move on to do our die cutting. So I've got the coordinating dies all placed already with some purple tape and then that classic frames that's the largest oval and it's just gonna add a little bit of stitch detail. I really love those dies. I'm also going to use my largest A2 panel um, from the A2 st uh, stacked and cut out my uh, watercolor background. As you can see, it's very, very shimmery. I really like that. I'm going to go ahead and use some um, adhesive roller to add that on to my card base. And then from here, it's basically final touches of adding my other images. My uh, card base is Nina Solar White 110 pound. So I'm just trying to position this how I think I'm going to want them to go. I know that I want the one large cluster on one side and the two smaller images on the other. Kind of anchoring it on either corner. 
going to go ahead and use some foam tape to pop up that um, sentiment. Get that down. And then I'm going to use some doubled up. So I just fold over my foam tape so that I get two layers of foam tape to put onto those flowers. I'm going to stick those down and then that really completes my card. I'm just going to mess with this for a little while, get these where I want them and make sure they're really well stuck down. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you are in the market for some holiday stamp sets, be sure to check out the new release from Waffle Flower. I know that you're really going to like it. All of the links to everything that you are looking for are down below in the description box. If you want to see more from me, I'd love to have you subscribe to my channel. Go ahead and hit the like button and I will catch you in the next one. Thank you so much.